put on the places. I could I could reboot my take that everybody hated three months ago, and I felt very empowered on Sunday. You remember three months ago when I told you I hate the fact that Steph Curry's on this team. Oh, jeez. I hate guru. it. I hate it. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. And then they have their first practice, and he's running around with a bloody hand. Wow. And he keeps, oh, oh God, my hand. Is, is everything okay? <gasps> a bloody hand? Dibs? Oh, no. Uh, oh, my God. Okay. Bloody hand. And I'll reboot my response to you and Guru, because he shared your opinion. Uh, for you to try to crush another man's dreams no. is it's counter not what to I your said. brand. No, it's You're not. You're trying to keep Steph Curry... In a box. You're trying to bubble wrap the chef. <laughs> chef! And all he wants is to go out and win gold for America. No. You're anti-Steph and you're anti-America. Um, and no, I don't find it to are, be tremendous. Those are both false. I had to think about one of them. But anyway, uh, no, that's not <laughs> the <me>. anti-Steph one. <laughs> I thought you were going anyway. to respond to me and apologize to me because the United Arab Emirates is a country, Abu Dhabi a province, and in there is where nobody, Big Team USA no, is playing. Nobody said United Arab Emirates is not a country. Nobody said that. Dibs tried to correct me. We yeah. laughed at the fact that you stumbled through Abu Dhabi Dhabi. You like you were doing you, a Flintstones episode. You're welcome. You, you Yabba Dabba Dabba do, Abu, Abu Dhabi Dhabi. Yeah, you combined Abu Dhabi and Dubai. You combined them both. They're playing in Abu Dhabi Dhabi. Yeah. Run the tape back. Anyway, you, it you doesn't won't. matter. Yeah, go book another Giants player, will you? Um, anyway. Anyway. That's my big man. Listen, if Steph wants to be there, Steph gets to be there, and I'm happy for him. I am allowed separately to be nervous. I'm allowed to be nervous. You can be whatever you want to be. You're allowed to be nervous. Okay. I'm nervous. I'm allowed to be thrilled for Steph, not for only you. for the upcoming birth of child number four, which has already happened. It's not upcoming anymore. He's here. Yep. But also for him to be able to go out there and be an Olympian. Great. And if something bad happens, God forbid, then at least he was out you, there pursuing you, his dreams. You act like these two things can't happen simultaneously, and I'd argue that they are a daily part of parenting. It's a daily part of you life. Can, you can be absolutely thrilled for someone and terrified at the exact same time. They get into college. You're about to take them. What two emotions are happening at the same time? Uh, joy and elation. Uh, and? Wow. Depends on <laughs> depends on who your kid is. <laughs> Don't let the door hit you and, where the good and, Lord splits you. And total fear. Like, they're heading out into the world. Like, I'm allowed to say, hey, this is, hey, Steph, if this is on your bucket list, dude, rock out with your Brock out. That's wonderful. Go do your thing. The, the, win a gold medal. But, uh, like, I, I do think it's funny. This is a little bit of a separate point. We act like we care about the Olympics a lot more than we do. I actually do. Okay. So, and if you do, yes. you do. But I would argue the average basketball fan, if I offered you right now, if I offered you the gold medal or a trip for the Warriors to the conference finals, what's more important to you? Uh, I'll give it to you in three simple letters. USA. You are rare. Those are my three words. I mean, the Western Conference Finals? Dude, I, what if I said to you, all right, here it is. What's going to get you out of your seat more? Let's pretend for a second. Team USA is in the gold medal game. They're in the gold medal game in France in whatever this is going to be, four weeks. Okay? That game... Or next year in round one of the playoffs, game one. What it, it, you can only win one of them. Which one it gets you out of your seat, gets you j jacked up? <laughs> Which one? Well, you give me game seven. It's different. Game one, who cares? Oh, dude. Game game one is meaningless. Way more into game one. Way like I'm way more into the gold medal game. Okay. And if even though it's eight hours ahead, it'll be probably about a noon tip. Our time, yeah. if they even make it. Yeah. It, no, it's, it's competitive landscape. Now. Absolutely. Dibs, how many other summer Olympic sports do you care about more than basketball? Probably maybe three. Which uh, ones? Like track swimming and, and field. And track and field is more than an event. But I would say the women's 100 meter with Shakari Richardson. I am deeply invested in that. Okay. Because I know what she's gone through. I don't know the athlete, but I do love the athlete. And I know what she's been through. 
And I love the way that she won the world from lane nine a couple of years ago, and she didn't qualify in the 200. Her story is one that I'm definitely deeply invested Listen, in. Listen, you care about what you care about. I'm not here to tell you what you care about. Like, great, whatever you care about. You like watching tennis. Volleyball, for sure. Like, sweet. Men's okay. indoor volleyball I've always been uh, a big fan of. And you that's, have a history in the sport. And it's a competitive uh, bracket. We've done well. We've fallen short. Shout out Bob Samuelson back in, uh, that must have been 92 Barcelona. My former classmate, when he got the uh, the ill-timed red, and we, we flamed out of that tournament. You weren't even born, Grandy. I get that. I think most Warrior fans, or fans of any team, for that matter, if you lose a playoff game, that's going to stick with you a lot longer than if the United States of America takes silver. I, I, honestly. How, how long does that stick with you? Team USA gets to the finals and loses to France. How long does that? St- How long till you go? Hey, what's for dinner tonight? Well, ask Doug Collins, who fifty-two years later he's still hot over what happened in nineteen seventy-two. Okay, when the Russians screwed us. I'm asking you. I'm not asking Doug Collins. I'm asking you. How long does it stay with me? Yeah, probably not as long as the uh, as the the play in tournament debacle there in Sacramento. Go. So that's all I'm saying. Like, I sure if Steph wants to do this, I'm a Steph fan. Good for Steph. Please get you know bring a jacket. Get home safe. That like I don't I'm, swim in the sand. I'm sorry. I care more about Warriors games than I care about Team USA. Right. But I you, just do. You don't care about what Kavon Looney's doing right now because you don't know what he's doing. He might be out there scaling Everest. And I hope he's okay. GP2 might be windsurfing. And, and, I, and I hope he's okay. You know, Buddy Heald might be rock climbing. He might be free soloing. Right now in, at half I would argue you're bringing up some things that are probably not contractually allowed. But you don't know. I don't know what's and in their contract. also not contractually allowed, apparently, is Andrew Wiggins playing for Canada. There you go. Which I wonder if anybody would ask the, the people who make that decision why he was not allowed it's to play. It's obvious why he was not allowed to play. Because they're afraid he gets hurt? Because they're involving him in trade discussions. Exactly. Right. Of course. So how's that going to play when Andrew comes back in October and you don't trade him? I don't know. Maybe maybe well, maybe not well. Maybe he you goes know? from 13 a game down to 9 a game. <laughs> it's a guaranteed I mean, contract. This is this is a guy who was bothered uh 4 years ago when it it, it was made public that uh you know that he didn't want to take the vaccine shot. Yep. And then I think that there was a connection between that and the way the Warriors have handled it. Andrew Wiggins the last two years. Zip lip, we're saying nothing. You know, they they wanted to keep it private. This, they weren't allowed to keep private. It came out. How's his relationship with the organization? I don't know. Does Andrew ever say anything to anyone? I don't know. I don't know. Does he, like, go into the back offices and throw a chair? Damn it, I want to play for Canada. Or is he just like, hmm. Yeah, probably the latter. <laughs> but, I don't know. Yeah. Like, Andrew Wiggins... I do know this. However they've tried to and handle him is not the the right way to put it because he's a grown man and they are grown adults in the organization, but they've not been able to, over the course of the last season and a half, get the best out of Andrew Wiggins. So it might be time to, to take a different approach because what you got out of Andrew Wiggins last year, he showed up. He showed up for the majority of the games, but... He was not very effective. Well, he did not appear to be that interested in being an impactful basketball player. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, I hear that, but that's not all on the team. I mean, you can't just snap your fingers and get the best out of someone. Right. Somewhere along the line, they've got to become their best selves. But somewhere along the line, you have to try a different approach to get the best out of Andrew Wiggins. And I mean, why did you get the best out of him in the championship year I've, and you haven't been able to subsequently? Yeah, you'd argue, I would think, that they've tried to mimic whatever the hell happened two years ago, but didn't work. Hasn't worked. Right. You know, totally different scenarios and last and year situations. they tried to tough love it a little bit more, it seems, by not having him finish games and not having him start games and... It seemed like they tried to shake him up a little bit with different techniques, well, and that, yet that, it didn't really net that many results. I mean, that's largely my point when I'm talking about Clay's contract and timing, and largely my point when I'm talking about what the Warriors will be. How would I answer my daughter when she says, are the Warriors going to be any good this year? We fail every year to realize how different every year is. 
There's so many different things happening. Even if it's the exact same roster, there's so many things that are different. Andrew Wiggins uh, was given all kinds of, of runway and opportunity two years ago, but now Jonathan Kaminga started to squawk, and he needs, and, and then was finally granted. And for a while we went through, well, these two have bad analytics on the floor when they're together. So that took away some of Andrew's opportunities. Some of it was also tied to what happened with him a couple of seasons ago where he was suddenly gone. Like, all of these things didn't exist two years ago in the championship year. Now they do. Other play- Like, you know, there are players on the team who were in college at the time. Now you got to find minutes for Pajemski. He didn't exist before. Like, the, the, the scenarios change every year. And I see that as being, that, that will happen again this year. That obviously will happen again this year. And, I, and I'm far from convinced that we even know who's going to be on the team right. this year. But all we can do is judge it based on what they are right now on July 9th. And I look at the roster as it sits right now, and I think about it as it pertains to Andrew Wiggins right now. And you're coming off a year where you didn't play that well. You didn't play that impactfully. You couldn't play for Team Canada because the team wanted to aggressively shop you. They aggressively shopped you. And here we are on July 9th, and you're still a warrior. So now Andrew comes into camp in about two and a half months, and you're expecting him to come on out and and do what? All right, Andrew, you know, we shopped you. You didn't have any takers. We didn't want you to play for Team Canada. And, you know, we've given you all the time you need to handle your personal business. Okay, are you ready to come out and play basketball? Yeah. I don't Yeah. 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 I I mean, I... I mean, I, I... I just, I, I know we feel like it sounds that way, and it clearly doesn't. Like, I, you know, one thing that I will say on Andrew Wiggins' behalf, I don't ever watch him play and feel like he's loafing. I think sometimes he gets saddled with that rep. He's not loafing, yeah, but I he's not, he does not play with a lot of dog in him. Yeah, but he's never done that. He did for the course of about uh, three okay. or four months. Yeah, and been, when he did that, you won a championship. It wasn't even three or four months. It was less. Well, he was an all-star. But, yeah, I, but I know. I, I would I would say it was from about February to June. I'll give him four months where you watched him play, and he, even his own teammates said, dude, 13 rebounds? Yeah. How about that? Look at you. How about you do that more often? And, you know, he probably yeah, thought, yeah, yeah, I could. Yeah, right. <laughs> I could if I wanted to. And um, that, to me, becomes the maddening part of it because you see what could be. Totally. And, you know, ultimately it's not because he doesn't show that much effort to do it. Um, let's go out to the phones at 888-957-9570, but we wanted to hit a couple more Steph Curry clips before we do so. Um, remember, we played for you a short time ago that he said, I want to be a warrior for life, dot, 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 but things change real fast in the NBA. This was another key point talking about how everything that he's going to decide to do going forward, not necessarily about loyalty, it's about something else. Winning is hard in this league, man. And the fact that we've been able to do it for this long has been amazing. Trying to keep the core together this long has been amazing. Obviously, Clay is the first one to, to not be a warrior. And so it's a different, different dynamic. I always want to win, plain and simple. And there's no contentment on just uh, cashing a check and playing basketball and riding it out. Like pressure is applied on like I want to win and I want to be in the best position to make that happen. Doesn't guarantee anything, but um, until that changes and I feel that energy changes, then I, I go about my business the same way. And uh, that's where I'm at. So yeah, that that I know it can sound like another scary quote, but to me, the the fundamental difference here plays. Steph Curry needs to feel like the best chance to win is being presented to him, but there's no discord. There's no anger between him and the Warriors. And I would argue the Warriors, like they're going to do everything in their power to present to him what he wants presented. You know what I mean? Like the the, the offer for Lowry Markinen is on the table and they're going to sit and they're going to wait. And we can talk about that. Slater wrote about it. There's an interest, I think, a couple interesting pieces to it. But, you know, the the offer was there for Paul George. Didn't play out. And Steph is fully aware of all these decisions that are are being made and probably weighing in on them himself. Right. But if they don't get anything done and the team has another year where they don't make the playoffs and 
it's another year of him running around and trying to carry the load and not getting a lot of help and not seeing a lot of help on the horizon. He may feel differently by the time we get to next July, is all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, could. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a lot like of discord. It doesn't have to end the way that the clay thing ended, where there was discord and frustration. Well, it, it could end in a different way. It could. I'd argue he has to feel like not only are, do we not have a chance to win, that the Warriors are not even trying to give him a chance to win. I find that to be an unlikely scenario well, as, tried as time this year, plays out. But they haven't gotten it done. And still I know trying. the Lori Markin and yeah. uh, deadline is still four weeks away, four weeks from today, before he would need to, to sign a deal and still be eligible to be traded in February, which right. is what Utah is facing. So um, there's still time. No doubt. 888-957-9570. How about Daniel in Oakland? Hi, Daniel. You're on with Willard and Dibbs. What's up? Hey, guys. Um, I wanted to touch base about when you were talking about uh, the West Coast or West Finals, Warriors Finals versus the USA Gold Team. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you guys were around, but I got to tell you, in 1980, when the Winter Olympics, when that – with 18 won against the Russians. That was, in my opinion, probably one of the greatest moments in sport history. And what it did for the country and how it, like, for probably millions of people in the hockey fans, um, I got to say, USA gold, man, all the way. Yeah, but can't, but, like, can't miss out right, like but, that. but, but, Daniel, this would not be anywhere near that. Like, Team USA is the favorite, it's our sport. They're almost expected to win gold. You had to go back 44 years, go to a different sport, and find one of the greatest upsets in the history of gaming. Um, like, I don't know. Would you think if Team USA wins gold this year that that would feel anything like 1980? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. But, man, I was 10 years old when that happened. And it, what, it, what I'm saying, like, what it did to the nation as a whole, it was it was pretty incredible, you know? Well, there's no doubt about that. I mean, that, that's why there's a movie made about it. Um, you know, Daniel, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, Brian and Palo Alto on Willard and Dibs. Hey, BPA. Hey, hey, Dibs. How you doing? Hey, what's up, babe? Um, hi, hi, Brian. What's up, babe? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, I think the vibe from the summit, of which there was almost like outright like eagerness to shut step out the door from some of the people. Um is incomprehensible, sort of like shoving Joe Montana out of town without having Steve Young in the wings. And you know, he's still a great player. Every top team, certainly in the West, has two stars, has a first and second option. Every single one. Steph didn't even have a fourth option. He had a fourth option last year, maybe. A fourth option who showed up sometimes, who now plays for the Mavericks. And so, gosh forbid, you actually give the guy some help. Like, to expect him to carry it on his own when no other t contending team in either league is expecting their superstar to carry the entire show by themselves. So I don't care about the, the rhetoric or the, you know, the rumors leaked to Mommy Pool about Lori Markin is our top target. Get it done. Get it done. You know, that's, that, that would be my take. And you owe it to him, and there's going to be there's going to be pure darkness after Steph's gone <laughs> for a while. Like to to think that you're gonna like extend the run on Jonathan Kuminga breaking twenty two footers is crazy. And like the allegiance to Kuminga, who is not a star, is not gonna be a star next year and wants thirty five million a year? Insane. It's just insane. It's like up the upside down bizarre world, you know, what's black is white. Anyways, guys, have a great day. Yeah, shout out Stranger job. Things. Thanks, right. BPA. BPA, yeah, thanks. The upside I, down. I, I tend to agree with the concept that he's that he's talking about. And not everybody was trying to shove no, Steph out the door. All. There was not one guy and another guy who kind of jumped in on that, but neither one of them was us. And you can go back and listen to the Odyssey <laughs> app and extrapolate who those people were. But I was one saying you give Steph seventy million, you give him seventy five million, whatever you need to give him to keep him. You do that. Yeah, and I, but we're also not even there yet, so it's not even it's not even fully relevant. Like for for what we're talking about right now, I tend to agree. I think you do too with with Brian with regard to like that's the good news for those of you who agree with what Brian just said. I think the Warriors agree with you. I think the Warriors agree with you. So you can't just be like, let's stop talking about Lowry marketing. Well, the Warriors are talking about him. Um, They've, they've got reportedly an offer on the table, and I'd argue the fact that Anthony Slater is writing about this 
and has all kinds of sourced reporting about where the Warriors are and the concept behind the article is that the Warriors are willing to play the waiting game, like I take something from that. Not just that the Warriors are willing to play the waiting game, they're sending a message. Hey, Utah, it's going to be your move first. For sure. For you, sure. You don't want our offer? Go ahead. Sign him to an extension. Well, and if they don't sign him by August 6th, then they can't trade him at the trade deadline. So that's if they sign if, him... That's if they sign him. Well, if they if don't they sign him If they give him an by, extension at all. Right. So if they don't sign him by August 6th, if they sign him on August 7th, they can't trade him until after Correct. next season. Correct. So if they're thinking about trading him at all, their motivation would be to trade him before August 6th or sign him and keep him... But it doesn't seem like that they want to do that. No, so, well, well, I mean, both both sides are playing the leverage game. There's yeah. a report in there that says, oh, people think Utah's going to keep him. And then over here, the Warriors are like, we'll wait. We're just fine. Exactly. We'll start the season with the roster we have. And That's, Sacramento's off the table off now. off the table with DeRozan. Yeah. So these two teams are just talking to each other through slates. Come on. Slates. We got all the time in the world. And Utah's like, we're keeping him. We're keeping him. And we're the Warriors him. are saying, oh, we're happy with our 14-man yeah. roster. If Utah wanted to keep him, you'd just do it. You'd do it. What are you waiting for? And if the Warriors really wanted him badly, they would have traded for him by now. They would have overpaid for him, but they're playing the